Hey, welcome back to Daily Hope. We're on a special journey this week leading up to Easter because we can actually trace the footsteps of Jesus through those final seven days leading up to his death and his resurrection. Yesterday, we looked at Palm Sunday found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 21. We're told what happens Monday morning, the very next day, about 2,000 years ago. It says this in Matthew 21, verse 18, in the morning, so this would have been a Monday morning, as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem. So we're actually told the, the verse before that he returned to Bethany. Bethany was uh, kind of a nice town outside of Jerusalem, almost like an ancient suburb. <laughs> it was a little bit nicer than Jerusalem and Jesus had spent the night there at the home of some friends. And then in the morning, verse 18, he's journeying on foot back into Jerusalem. And we're told this, he was hungry. I, I love how real the true story of Jesus on earth is. He was hungry. Verse 19, he noticed a fig tree beside the road. He went over to see if there were any figs, but there were only leaves. And it's almost like he's a little angry. He says to it, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the tree withered up. Uh, this is the only miracle I know of, by the way, that is incidental, um, that didn't actually have a, 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 an immediate purpose of glorifying God. Now, there is a purpose. The disciples are amazed as usual. And Jesus tells them this in verse 21. He tells them, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and you don't doubt, you can do things like this and so much more. You can even say to this mountain, they're probably walking past and he points at a mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You can pray for anything and if you have faith, you will receive it. Now that's a verse, verse 22 there, that some people have abused. People have said, you know, um, if you send me money, I'll pray for you and you'll be healed. And all sorts of hucksters and hypocrites have abused that verse. And so as a result, those of us who take the Bible seriously and we really want to walk with God and keep it all about Jesus, sometimes we almost shy away from verses like this because we don't want to misuse them. But I think there's a middle road where we believe what Jesus said and we act upon it with priorities of what does God want to do in the world. So I would ask you this, if Jesus says here, you can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it, what would you pray for, for his kingdom? Not for your gain or for your pleasure, but for his kingdom. Is there someone who you would pray that they would come to salvation? Maybe there's someone who, when we talked yesterday about inviting for Easter, you thought, they would never come. They want nothing to do with church. What if you start praying that God does a miracle in their life and you invite them by faith and then they say, yeah, I'd love to go with you to Easter. Who could you pray for? Or maybe you're in the middle of something where you just, you can see what God would want done, but it looks humanly impossible in your family or in your church or in the next generation. What if we prayed believing that you can pray for anything and if you have faith, you will receive it? In fact, right now, I want to encourage every single one of us, there's thousands of us now every day on Daily Hope, why don't we each just think of one name or one face of a person who doesn't know Jesus and let me lead us in a prayer right now. God, we know that each one of us, we're thinking of a friend, relative, coworker, their name, their face is in our mind, Jesus, that you died on the cross for them. God, that you made them in your image, that from eternity past, you made a way for them to be made right with you through Jesus and what we're celebrating this week. And so Jesus, we wanna claim your promise that we can pray for anything and we pray for the salvation of every person in each of our minds right now. You know their names, you know their faces. We pray that you would bring them to salvation, that they would repent and believe, that they would receive the free gift of salvation, that they would be transformed, that their sins would be forgiven, that they'd be made new. And God, we ask this with faith, believing that you hear our prayers, that you're a God who still does miracles. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen.